Well, Dr. Ken Kramer is a research scientist and journalist with Space Up Close, and he joins us from Florida near the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, Dr. Kramer, thank you so much for your time. First of all, can you give us an idea of how important this mission was? Well, it's certainly a very important mission to India. It would have been their first lunar landing, and it's certainly an important mission to humanity, uh, as uh, one of the one of the people on your your broadcast say, because we want to learn more about the moon. We want to get to the South Pole. We want to expand what we know, because at the South Pole, that's where the water is, and so that's very important for future science. How difficult was it for for India to to achieve what it was trying to achieve to get this lander to actually land on the moon? Well, it's very difficult. It's not simple. You know, more than half the probes to land on the moon have failed. The, Israeli, uh, the Israelis tried earlier this year, and they did not succeed. The Chinese tried at the beginning of this year, and they, and they did succeed. So half of all missions have failed. So it's not a simple thing at all. But they learned a lot from trying, and one really has to applaud the Indians for doing this. What makes it so difficult? Because we've seen, you know, the Mars rover, you know, other, other um, uh, you know, contraptions land on Mars, land on asteroids. Why does the moon remain so difficult? Well, it's fully autonomous. And even at Mars, it's the same thing. Less than half the missions have succeeded. The U.S. has a really good success rate, but the other countries don't. You have to do a lot of simulations. You have to do a lot of work in order to make this work. And you mentioned asteroids. Yeah, we got an asteroid mission there right now, and we, the uh, OSIRIS-REx mission, we want to grab a sample. But, you know, there's no guarantees. Those engines, they have to work just right. They lost communication about two kilometers altitude, you know, and they have to descend. They have to break the descent from 3,600 miles down to zero so they don't crash land. They have to find a spot that's safe. You know, there's a lot of boulders all over the place. So that makes it extremely difficult. And the, and the robot has to do it all on its own. It can't wait for any human intervention. So they have to program a lot of corrections in there to do it all right. And, you know, it, it didn't work. But... They do have the orbiter, and that's still continuing. It, it does sound uh, really challenging, and like it, it sort of pushes the limits of robotics and science. On a personal level, if uh, so many of these missions fail, what is it like emotionally for the scientists that have, have spent many years working on it? Well, it's sad. You know, I'm a scientist, and when my experiments fail, I'm very sad about it. But we get up, and we try again, and we make it better, and we figure out what went wrong, and we go back, and we do it even better the next time. And then usually it works out the next time if it doesn't work out the first time. So, it, yeah, it is disappointing. You can see it. I watched the live broadcast. They're all excited. It's just like when NASA lands or Russia or anybody or China lands. Everybody's real excited, but you don't know until that final moment if it's going to work out or not. So, yeah, it's an emotional roller coaster. But you know what? That's the way this business is. And that's what makes it really exciting. And we learn a lot from these missions in the end. Indeed, I'm sure it won't be the last attempt. Dr. Ken Kramer with Space Up Close, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me.